Okay, please check out my 12 week challenge. Let's let's put that in there. Hello, everyone. I tried doing this yesterday and it wouldn't work. So, fingers crossed. I did bait you a little bit with the, the dog picture in the thumb. That's the dog there. But if he's barking, that means my missus is on her way back. And if she's on her way back, coffee. Main reason for this, of course, yes, to answer your questions, anything you might want to know, but also for the next couple of days, my online personal training business has got, it's a 12-week transformation. So basically you get coaching in your programs, someone to chat to, someone to help you. But I'm not here just to promote that. I'm here to answer any questions you have. Because I'm always pretty well rehearsed when I'm doing, you know, topics and stuff on YouTube. This can be my opportunity to prove to you that I'm a good guy. Uh, hello from Croatia. I love Croatia. Uh, Split, Havar, main place I've been to. Ultra Europe, probably one of the best, best festivals I've ever been to. And I've been to a lot. Gone for Aussie, I see. Well, I've had a tash and a mullet before. But yeah, hello from Uganda. Mm. Bruce Lee, is that a Ugandan name? Um, yo, the Doberman, where's he at? He's actually a Kelpie. Let's see if we can get him in. Hello, how was it? Oh, he must have been out in the garden then. Um, hello from Kent, if you know where that is. Of course I know where. I'm from Berkshire. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, he's had breakfast. And I gave him some of the smelly fish. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> say hello, say hello to the internet. Tell So, although he looks... Thanks, Tay. Although he looks like a, a Doberman, he's actually called a Kelpie. So in Australia, that's what your Border Collie looks like. So he's a... Um, uh, a working dog, which means he's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, when are you going back to a normal haircut? Well, the thing is, I probably haven't got many years left. You know what I mean? You know what she says, sexy. But, you know, going th going a little bit thin on top. I'm 34. So, you know, at some point, I'm probably just going to bow out and shave it. So, for the time being, I might as well, you know, make hay while the sun shines, as they say. So, yeah, let's have a look. What do you think about Callum Von Mogren and his recovery? Do you know what? Even though he's definitely back on the source, I'm happy to see him back because I'm a big fan of Callum Von Moga. His physique is incredible and he's gone through a lot of shit. You know, whether or not, you know, you could say that the the drugs and the, the all of the things he's gone through, he lost his brother, he's got in all these bad injuries. It's enough to knock anyone, uh, you know, I'm glad to see him kind of making a comeback. Will he be an Olympia champion? I just don't know, but still. What do you think about Craig seminar to benefit ADCC competitors? Uh, yeah, I saw that. Uh, he's over in Dubai at the moment. So if you're in Dubai, you should probably go to train at Team Nogiri. You should probably train with him. I think he's going to Bali as well. Um, just checking the UK knowledge hasn't gone out the window. Actually, funnily enough, about 10 years ago, I was playing rugby in New Zealand. and I captained a team in New Zealand and a team from Essex came over and toured. We went out to do the flip for the kickoff. He's like, all right, mate. And I'm like, all right, mate. And he's like, where are you from? He traveled to buttfuck nowhere in New Zealand to meet another pommy bastard. Would you fight Logan Paul in MMA for a million dollars? Yeah, I'd fight anyone for a million dollars, especially if I didn't even have to win. But I'd probably resemble Dylan Dennis. I'm not much of a striker, if I'm honest. Um, Willie, mate, I'm a guy that struggles with alcohol. It's taken me away from sport, which I love. Playing back football now this week. Done one year sober. That's amazing. Um, five foot ten, 102 kg. Had bad lower back pain. Thoughts probably lose a bit more weight or go away. I think this is excellent. You know that you've acknowledged you've had a problem with alcohol and you've got away from it. I, I see a big movement coming of people moving away from alcohol. I mean, the more objective measures that we have, and this is my brand was built on never saying no to a gin and tonic. So I've done my fair share of drinking. But if you've got lower back pain, uh, maybe it could be carrying too much weight. It could be stride. Um, could be a lot of different things. Uh, I'll probably see a physio if I was you. Maybe hip flexors. Maybe not. Um, so, yeah. Uh, would you have any experience in sleep apnea and training? Have you had any clients suffering from it? Yeah, so sleep apnea is definitely... If you if your missus or someone in your family says that you are stop breathing in your sleep, 100% please address that. 
Um, I know the idea of wearing a CPAP, which is a continual pressure airways like device. It's like Bane's mask that <sighs> keeps you breathing overnight. People that sleep with a CPAP, although it's crazy, after a few weeks, they're like, they feel alive again. So sleep apnea is really bad. Also sleep apnea, if you're getting poor quality night's sleep, then the next day, if you're sleep deprived, you're probably going to eat more and you're going to have a bigger appetite. So it's a vicious circle. Then they gain weight, then they have worse sleep apnea. Uh, how can I gain size but not get too bulky like a bodybuilder? Listen, mate, no one in the history of the world has ever put on too much size. All right? Never, ever. You're going to struggle to even get the physique of an athlete, mate. So if you think you're going to trip over the physique of an athlete and end up like a bodybuilder, you're wrong. And even if you did have some godlike physique, uh, genetics, if you felt like you were getting too bulky, you would just dial back the amount of volume that you gave to that body part. Oh, my quads are getting too big, said no one ever. You would just give more to the posterior chain, less to the hamstrings. Uh, hmm. Think of going to Australia on a working visa. Would you reckon Melbourne or Sydney? Melbourne is a lot like the UK because it's like an, it's a good city. But Sydney, beaches, women, if you're into that, you know, Jose, Jose, going to get yourself a nice Australian lady. You're going to need that visa, you know, so all of those things. Uh, Sydney, I would say, but that's because I like, uh, you know, I like the beach and whatnot. Fizz, why not go bald? As I said before, I'm probably going that way, but let's not jump the gun. Can I rock a mullet still? Yes, then I will rock a mullet. How much protein shall I have whilst weight training? I think two grams per kilogram is a good place for like, you know, you guys, you fitness bros, fitness bros, you're well informed. You've watched videos from Derek, more plates, more dates. I think one gram per kilogram is good. Thoughts on that guy that ran the length of Africa? Incredible. But fuck that for a packet of biscuits, right? He's, he's, he's doing it for sure it was like charity or you know to grow you know a fantastic thing like in australia we've got ned brockman home i'm just gonna close this door when you run like that that far you're pretty much set up for life after that and you you're pretty much set up for life but how long does that take you months you could put me here with this microphone and i could probably get a bigger following you know what people do is insane good on him wouldn't catch me doing that no thank you all right. Sorry. I missed a few here. I'm going to have to speed these up a little bit. I'm, I do apologize. Christ, there's bloody loads. How's kid prep? Mrs. is in charge. What to eat in the morning? Depends on the goal. If you want to build muscle, probably have protein. And that first, you know, feeding if you can. Me, I don't like too much protein before I train. Sometimes I have cereal. Um, but yeah. Can you give me three basic meals one should eat to lose weight? It's not really the meals you're having. It's putting yourself in a calorie deficit. Dimitri, if you go to my website, uh, I've just left you a link at the bottom. Uh, there's a calorie calculator. Actually, hold on. I might have to find you the calorie. Well, you download the app. It's completely free. You can also get it there. Um, so yeah. What's the best way to train weights in BJJ? Is it okay to do alternate days? If I was you, I'd probably just do a little bit of weights before jiu-jitsu. It's probably the best way to do it before you get cold and do that. How'd you get over a sugar craving? Have something with sugar in it. Just don't have loads. Tell you what, if you, if you crave sugar and you eat an apple, you're gonna you're gonna hit half of it, or just have a bit of chocolate. Just don't have a fucking stupid amount. Uh, if I'm on TRT minus diet, should I still be trying to, to boost my test through supplements? No, because you are exogenously um, taking testosterone. So there's two words for you guys to learn here. You got endogenous, and that's our production of something, and exogenous, which is from the outside coming in. So a lot of these supplements are to boost endogenous production. So it's to get your testicles to you know. <clears throat> make more testosterone. Some of them could work with uh, follicle stimulating hormone, FSH and luteinizing hormone, which is like the uh, communication pathway between your brain and testicles. But if you're taking TRT exogenously from the outside in, your endogenous production is going to be shut down. So it's just going to be a massive waste, massive waste. Uh, what's the first thing you do in the morning you wake up? Uh, my missus often brings me a cup of coffee and she drops it next to the bed. So I'm like, I take my eye mask off, I drink that coffee, and I check my phone. I scroll on my phone for 15 minutes because I'm in Australia and a lot of um, like work and socials and whatnot are in the UK. I need to check my DMs and make sure no one's died, make sure I'm not getting sued, make sure I'm not getting cancelled, you know, just make sure everything's all right, then I go take the dog for a walk. Hmm. All right. 
if I eat nothing but Oreos all day and I'm in a calorie deficit, will I lose weight? Yeah. Think about this way, right? Prisoners of war didn't have the best diets. They lost weight. They lost weight, brother. You know, you go to a North Korean gulag, you be eating rice, you lose weight. Energy balance. People in a coma lose fat. Oh my God, you lost weight. What happened? I've been in a coma six months. What happened? They put less food through the tube than I was burning on a daily basis. Um, I've just broken up my girlfriend. What do I do? How do I move on? Well, first thing I'd say, feel grateful, bro. Look, no happy relationship has ever ended in a breakup. All right. So you weren't right for each other. How do I know? Because if you were, you'd still be together. Move on. And also imagine this, right, Will? You, you've probably experienced this before and other people have on the live. Every time you break up with someone, you end up getting with someone better. Always happens. You're older, more mature. You're more well-versed in this. So at some point, you're going to settle down with someone better. And then when, when, you, when you're really punching, right, and I'll be honest with you, that's the position I'm in, right? It got to a point where the reason me and my missus got on so well is I haven't got enough years left on the planet to find someone like that. So I was like, lock it down. But lucky for you, Will, you get to have a little play around. You get to go on a few dates. You get to get the, I'm beyond that, brother. I'm 34. I never, I could never go on a first date again, mate. So if anything, I'm envious of you, right? You should be excited for yourself. You're going to go on some good dates. You're going to go on some bad dates. You're going to, you're going to sleep with some psychos, bro. You're going to, you're going to pump and dump once in a chick and she's going to want you to move in the next week. These are all the, the, you know, the exciting parts of life and you get to, you get to enjoy that. So enjoy. That's what I'd say. Cool. Bloody hell. Thoughts on marijuana. Um, not, not mad on it. If I'm honest, there's uh, oh Jesus Christ. I missed even more than that. Oh Jesus Christ. All right. Please slow down with the questions. Uh, just started jujitsu, was 300 pounds, lost 100 pounds, still very new to fitness, couldn't do a single push-up a year ago. I seem to injure myself rolling. Any advice? Don't go as hard. Relax, please. Um, simple question. How are you, man? I'm very good. Would you recommend moving to Australia? For me, it was probably the best thing I've ever done. For other people, maybe not. How's the RS6? Fantastic, right? I bought an Audi RS6. I couldn't stop watching YouTube videos about it. I've seen them all. Auto Trader, Matt Watson, and off, off by heart. I'm, I watched so many videos about an RS6 that my missus said to me, just go buy one. When I went to the garage, he goes, do you want to test drive it? I said, no, already made my mind up. So bought it. And most of the time you buy something and you're bored of it. If you, I love it. I love it. You get in it, cold start. Oh, Jesus Christ, gives me a tingle in the penis thinking about it. James O'Sullivan, what do you think about barefoot shoes? Listen, if you're in a long-term relationship and you don't mind repelling birds 24-7, sure. But you're never going to sell me a pair of Vivo barefoot over a pair of Crocs, right? I know Crocs ain't cool, but, you know, I just, I, I can't, I don't really like putting shoes on unless I need to. I've got a gym. I just train it barefoot, you know, and or do you know what I do? So some places don't let you in wearing Crocs or whatever. I just tell them I've got a broken toe. Uh, excuse me, sir. You need to wear shoes. Broken my toe. Do you want to see it? They go, oh, no, 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 thanks. Do you find that the carnival diet community is taking it too far? Well, this is the interesting thing, right? I did nearly a month of carnival and it's actually all right. Like, my protein levels massive, satiety high. There was a few wild poos on it, but I've I've tried fasting. I've tried everything. I even tried, you know, juice diets. Carnival is the only one where I'd actually probably, um, you know, I'll probably recommend it to some people. Here's one: Is Eddie Abu accurate or is it all BS? Okay, so I'll, I'll be balanced here. Um, Eddie, first of all. The version of you see of him now, this is not Eddie Abu because Eddie Abu has been in the fitness industry for decades. But what happened is probably about a year ago, a certain persona he would put forward would resonate well with the content. So he has just doubled down on becoming that person. If you go back just a year, he's sat on a sofa and he's being quite sensible and quite balanced. But when he sits there, the veins popping out of his neck going, this is shit, wake the fuck up. You know, he gets loads of engagement because it's a bit like a freak show, right? We had Tiger King and we had Liver King. And when we see this like real crazy character, we just can't stop but look, similar to watching a car crash, right? Because some people are there, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid, but the others of us are just sat there going, fucking hell, that's someone's granddad. That's someone's granddad wearing a wig and a disguise in shop screaming at food, right? He's making 50,000 pounds a month on school.com. The guy hasn't got a clue about 
Well, yeah, as he's just kind of indoctrinated into a certain belief. None of what he says is evidence-based, you know, right? But saying that, although I've just called him a crazy granddad that doesn't really know what he's talking about, his advice, the backbone of it, without him trying to go viral with every video, is solid. We shouldn't be consuming too much uh, ultra-processed food, but there should be some balance. And bodybuilders know this probably better than anyone because they diet their whole lives, so they need that balance. But there are some double standards here. The guy took life-shortening amounts of steroids for the majority of his career. Now he's preaching that you can't eat a bagel. You're like, double standards much, mate. You shaved 15 years off your life taking trend, but suddenly I can't have a bagel with breakfast. Um, so that's one. He kind of, you know, portrays the insulin hypothesis. Two, he'd probably do a lot better if he was a bit more balanced with his opinions. Now, there's, there's a big part of him that you can tell he is addicted to the attention because he must be an insecure bloke of some sense because of his bodybuilding career. Now, I'll put my hand up first and go, I'm a massively insecure bloke, right? I took steroids when I was younger. I've been so obsessed with trying to look a certain way that I made a career out of it, right? So, you know, a lot of the people I take the piss out of my content is me. I know what it's like. And I, I don't know whether I was adopted or the way I was brought up by my parents. I'm obviously insecure to the point that I fucking use social media and try and, you know, get massive amount. Like I've got 400 people watching me now. I've obviously got some issues that I enjoy doing this, whether it's fucking narcissism down, you know, whatever it is. But he posts 10 times a day. Now, if you can't see that perfect storm of attention seeking to the fact that he was a high level bodybuilder that never quite made it, You've got this, this villain, this character, who for one point in his life is actually getting the attention and the money that he's been working for for decades. And it's just interesting to watch it unfold. But now, the, the only crazy thing about this, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to skip some of these questions, is that it's not going to sustain, right? And this comes, I've been doing, I've been making videos for 10 years, and my growth has been quite slow and steady because... I'll call a spade a spade and I'm not palatable to most people, right? You know, people think I'm a dickhead, fine, whatever. But I've had to try and constantly reinvent myself for years and years and years because people get bored of me. For every thousand followers I gain, I lose 500, which is fine. So um, I don't see people in a year's time still tuning into Eddie Abu. They're going to get bored of him. And because of that, I almost feel sorry for him because he's had this huge millions of followers, hundreds of thousands a week. It's going to slow down. It's going to stop. After a while, people are going to start unfollowing him. And what that does to your mental health when everything is your social media, I just don't know. So, yeah. Thoughts on Sean Stafford? I like Sean Stafford. Um, really nice guy. Um, how are sales of the drink going? Any plans to see it in stores on the high street soon? Yes. So for any of you that don't know, Newtonic, me and Chris Williamson made a productivity drink uh yeah we're trying to work with retail at the moment to get a good deal you can get it online it's sold out in america at the moment but uh in the uk it's still on sale I'll, I'll give you a little link if you want i'll tell you what and you could use it as an energy drink but let me be honest with you so this is 120 milligrams of caffeine in it then four other nootropics if you're going for a pre-workout probably have ghost probably have c4 energy um if you're you know about to do deadlift 1RM, probably have a can of Monster because there you're looking between 160 to 200 milligrams, which is more than that. But if you're not looking to nuke yourself with caffeine, if you were going to do some editing, if you were going to work on a project, scripts and videos, uh, whatever, and you don't want the jitters and the anxiety, then this could be a good option for you. And I'll tell you what, on this live, if you were to buy some and you weren't to enjoy it, I'll buy the other 11 cans off you. I'll monzo you the money. Uh, that's how sure I am. Craig, have you seen Three Body Problem on Netflix? Right up your street. Mate, Three Body Problem, right? I've never seen something start so good and fall off. That fall off needs to be studied, right? Because Three Body Problem starts so good. And then it's like they run out of budget halfway through. And you're like, what is it? As soon as they the bugs bit, it's like the director just upped and left and was like, nah, you lot are on your own, right? It just... I'm, so good then so shit um yeah my family is split 50 50 in australia and england want to go six months enough to make it decision. yeah if you're if you if you're imagine this right i'm gonna tell you a quick story um 
don't leave. Uh, no. So I was PTing in the gym in Bracknell back in the day, and I had this client called Jackie. And Jackie and Sue were these older ladies that I trained, never put their prices up because they were like, they were like having extra mums. Okay. And I had this inkling I wanted to go to Australia from a psychedelic trip. But anyway, and I go into the gym and Jackie and Sue, I used to warm up on a cross trainer for like five minutes. So it was more, it was like a psychological and a physiological warm up. We'd come into the gym up on the cross trainer. If I was finishing with another client, they would just go up. I would then go get in front of the cross trainer or talk to them because I wanted to gauge how they were feeling. Because a client would come in sometimes and they'd be like, oh, I'm so stressed. Oh, I'm knackered. Oh, my back hurts. And already I'm changing their session in my in my brain. But then other times they're like, yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm rare. And I'm like, sweet, cool. Anyway, so Jackie's on the cross trainer. And I'm sat there on the windowsill. And I said to her, like, I think I might go to Australia. And she stops, right? Jackie in her place, she just stops. And I'm like, why have you stopped? She goes, James, you need to go. And I said, why? She goes, me and my husband, Mick, we were going to go when we were younger. We put it off a few years, then we put it off a few more years. We never went. We had kids, then we had grandkids. She goes, I will never, ever see Australia. And it's one of the biggest regrets that we've ever had in our life because we thought we had more time. And before we knew it, the time had gone. And she goes, it's the biggest regret for both of us in our uh, marriage that we never actually went to Australia. So then that obviously like hit me quite hard, but then I'll never forget the next time she came in for a PT session, she walks in she, before she says anything. She's like, we bought your tickets yet. I was like, no, she was like, you need to buy tickets. And I went and she still comments on my Facebook and stuff like that. It's been like eight years. Um, and I think that people need to appreciate that, that if you're thinking about going to Australia, you know, oh, I might do it next year. Oh, I might do it in flights cheaper. I might do this, might do that, might do this. Life will go by and you won't do it. And then before you know it, you've got a pregnant missus, before you know it, you've given, given a job promotion. Before you know it, you're 45. And now the idea of moving to Australia, you're not going to get a job easy because you've got to move your family across and you've got two kids that are in school and they've got friends. So I think if you ever have an inkling to go somewhere, whether it's America or Australia, Europe, whatever, just go. Figure it out along the way. You've never really got the opportunity to, to wait. Uh, what do you think about Alpha GPC? I wanted it in Newtonic, but we can't. you can't put Alpha GPC in... Um, drinks in Australia or the UK in Europe. So that's why we use Cognizant, which is very similar. Um, but yeah. All right. Um, three tips to start by your own gym. Oh, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. Do you know Farnham? Bracknell was 40 minutes from me. Of course I know Farnham. I trained jujitsu there. You've got um, J Butler BJJ there. So there I go there sometimes. Facebook. Ooh, brother. Ooh. But listen, mate, Sid Potter, you little... You're put, I'm putting you in a timeout, son. You're getting in a 10-minute timeout. Have that, you bastard. Try spamming my bloody page. You, I'll fight you. Um, oh, yeah, there you go. Who's laughing now? Currently, I've spoke far too much weed. How do you relax on mind in the evening? I'm, I'm tired, mate. I've got ADHD all day. I'm bing, 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 bing. By the time it comes to the evening, I don't need to chill down. I'm uh, I like melt on the sofa. <sighs> uh, do you ever see yourself going on the Joe Rogan experience in the future? I would love to. Don't get me wrong, but... I don't think I'm interesting enough for the time being. I can imagine if 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 I was Joe and I was to come across my own profile, I'd go, oh, another personal trainer, is it? Oh, another PT trying to go viral. Oh, he does jujitsu, he's a brown belt. He's a black belt. You know, I had a podcast, although I stopped it, whatever. Although I could you could say, James, you're a funny guy. Thank you. Your facetious banter is fantastic. You know, all of this. I don't see myself there yet. But I'm sure when the day comes, the day comes, but we'll see. So that's why I've just got to keep working on myself. Not worry about other people. You know, if it never happens, it never happens. If it does happen, it'll be cool. Have you been watching Physical 100? Yeah, and it's been making me... Physical 100 Netflix has been making me feel like a fat piece of shit. Right? It's been making me feel like i'll watch that and i'm like i'm going out for a run my missus is like it's 10 p.m i'm like we need to get fitter i need to be ready in case some korean wrestler wants to go some the one with the uh running on the treadmill is crazy you barking at me mate all right we're gonna have a problem all right thoughts on chris and lmnt bandwagon walking into the importance of salt acting on the adenosine system with new studies now i do love electrolytes i've never tried lmnt 
Hey. Um, but if if you got what Chris got to promote that, we'd all love it, right? If I could tell the world what these bad boys sponsor Chris's channel for, and, and at the end of the day, it is Chris's main business. So although I can be critical, we'd all be, we'd be going, oh, this is the best thing I've ever had. No, I'm joking. Um, he actually loves it. Like, me and Chris fundamentally disagree on the AG1, right? But I see him offline and he loves it. He's there traveling with his little travel pouches. I'm like, bro, get over yourself. Because if if Chris was a, if he was like a sellout, he'd be like, hey guys, drink AG1 and LMNT, but he wouldn't have it on him. But when we did a tour in America, he was literally nailing it every day. So that's just something we disagree on. You know, that's over that's overpriced greens powders. And that is just an electrolyte sachet. You could get liquid IV, which I reckon has got a better formulation, but that's my opinion, eh? How do people afford BJJ? It's so pricey here. Well, what, what does it cost a week or a month? You know, you could train full time. You could train three times a day for that amount. If you only go to jiu-jitsu twice a week, yeah, it's expensive. But hold on, here's another question for you. The ability to fight, to be combative. Someone, if you get your blue belt, right? If someone tries mugging you, as long as they don't have a knife, you're going to do all right. So I, I disagree. I think jiu-jitsu is one of the best price thing ever. All right, here you go. Jiu-jitsu for me, it's been great for my mental health over the years, uh, giving me something to, you know, really, really enjoy. Um, cheaper than therapy. Fuck me. I did therapy a bit. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. Did it a few times. And um, yeah, didn't get anything from it. It cost a bloody arm and a leg. I reckon a good open mat is better for my mental health than any fucking therapist has been. And that's not me saying that therapy is shit. It's just saying that I didn't like it. Um, okay. Advice for someone in his 20s and dating and standing out. Try not to use apps. This would be the best thing I'd say. Right? And I put this in a video the other day. Um, if you look great in a picture, you're getting loads of pussy. But if you're someone that's under six foot and you're, you know, maybe not chiseled with a massive jaw or whatever, you're going to have to find these girls in real life. Because... Um, what's his name? Rory Sutherland on Modern Wisdom made a great point. Cameron Diaz and Jennifer Aniston would never have made it as supermodels because their attraction is in how they move and how they look. And we can all agree on that. You fall in love with Jennifer Aniston from watching her, not looking at her in a picture, but from watching her. Now, all of the guys watching this will know that there are going to be women in your life that you didn't think were that fit. And then you saw them in a certain way and you're like, oh, you're actually beautiful. You need to get in that mindset, put yourself in front of people to go up to people and be like, hey, yo, hey, yo, trying to get a coffee. Um, because if you're just going to let them use a picture and a little bit of shitty chat on an app, you're never going to get ahead. So, yeah. Why is Wollongong best? Well, I actually live a little bit outside Wollongong um, because it's, I'm in a very nice beach town. So I've got the beach opposite my house. I can let Alf. So now I have my gym, my house, my dog, jiu-jitsu. That's all I need. What about your friends? Don't need them. What about your mates you used to live with? Don't need them. You outgrow them after a while. And here's the thing, right? My best mates, love them to pieces. All brokies. None of them self-employed. They're all working for the man, doing nine to fives. I don't need that mindset, right? They're the type of guys to check their bank account balance when they're buying dinner. And I don't need that around me. You know, I'm like, I'll get this. They're like, no, 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 let's split. And I'm like, <clears throat> what, what do you think? You think the split in the bill is good for my mindset, right? You know, how, how dare you? So a lot of the time when I see my best mates, I'm just like, uh, brother, uh, uh, brother, what's that brother? Gold Amex brother. Uh. You know, I see a gold Amex and I'm thinking, wow, your credit rating must be smelly, you know? You know, unless you, what's that? Debit card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, checking the bank account. Yeah, I remember what it was like in 2017, yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, they're not brokies per se, but they probably use an overdraft. You know, I don't want to hang around with that. You know, what's that? Trained in perspective and that. I'll just go see him if I need to. You know? 
Yeah, I'm just having a chat with the internet. Doing all right. 400 there. 400. Yeah. Um, all right. How much is the two, three bed house cost where you live? All right. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. Um, I was only joking before, uh, ripping into my mates. I see them, they come down here, I go down them. So in the UK, uh, I remember looking at like houses and let's say a million pounds, right? A million pounds in the UK, in London, will get you like a, you know, I don't know, maybe a flat. I don't think you'd get much more than a flat in London, especially if you can like Clapham, Southwest London, anything like that. If you did, it would be quite dated. Um, for about the same money where in this part of the world, you could probably get a three bed house with a garden a new one, uh, and you could live within 300, 400 meters of the beach. Now, again, in London, you're connected to, you know, everything. Things happen in London. Where I live, nothing happens. You know, there are no film premieres in Sydney, not to good films anyway. There are not, you know, no one comes via Sydney. So when it, I've, I've definitely removed myself from the world a bit, but as far as quality of life, although it's still being expensive, um, yeah. I just don't think if I wanted somewhere that was good for the soul, I couldn't afford it in the UK. Um, what are the three people you'd like to train with the most? Oh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one, actually. Let me think about that. I'll do a few more. Thought on George Heaton's body as a fleshlight because of the competition monotonic cadence. Uh, I haven't tried cadence. I'm a bit offended he didn't send me any. Uh, but it's electrolyte drink, isn't it? A bit like Iman Gadzi has also done electrolyte drink. We don't do an electrolyte. Uh, drink we do a productivity drink we use nootropics not electrolytes it's a very different thing how's the cauliflower area? sore um so this is 24 hours off training so uh i did ice it last night trying to get it to go down a bit but i've got open mat in three hours so no doubt this is only going to get bigger and uglier but yeah uh where did you train bjj and bondi just moved here from the uk go to garage there's a gym called garage in uh bondi junction Probably going to be your best one. Ay, 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 ay. Thoughts on Marigali, Wagner Rocha. It's going to be an interesting one. You would think Marigali would pinch it because he's been training with Gordon Ryan. Thought on Hamza. I'm really interested to listen to Hamza and Chris Williamson because I don't know what he's going to be like in real life. But he um, he's an interesting chap. Uh, is cauliflower a full-time pain in the ass? Does it ever stop bothering people? Hopefully it will go hard and it will stop giving me jib. All right. We've done half an hour. Jesus, that went quick. Uh, everyone, please... Uh, if you haven't considered it, there's a link here where I should pinned. I've got a 12-week challenge at the moment. So if any of you are interested in online coaching with me and my my team, uh, basically for about £45 a month, or call it £150 for four months, you can take part in our challenge, get all your programs taken care of, have a coach around the clock. Um, but even before that, if you create an account with us, you get your first week for free and we don't charge you anything come the end of it. So there's still enough time for you to try my platform, click the link here, you'll get a workout for free. So if you're a cheap bastard, you could screenshot it and do a runner with it. Um, but yeah, complete free trial, no hidden charges, you don't get a build. The idea is that in seven days, you might love it enough to end up choosing a membership. And if you don't, we've actually got memberships from 10 pounds a month. So I'll tell you what, I might just give you this one. Um, if you use this one that I've just posted, you get free. Um, free trial, get a program, take it to the gym, take it for a spin. If you love it, cool. If you don't love it, sweet, never do business. Um, but it won't cost you anything unless you want to join. So yeah, we left a little link there. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, great to see you all. And uh, I will catch up with you guys soon. Remember, if you can't be good, be careful. And don't come in them, come on them. See ya.